Hello, everyone. This is Sean here with uh, the Smith Law Firm and the Teach Legal YouTube channel. I wanted to jump on here really quick and talk about a Supreme Court case that came down last week that I did not get a chance to talk about yet. It was called the um, Americans for Prosperity versus Bona. And there also was a um, another petitioner, I believe, the Thomas Moore Law Center. Both of these organizations are nonprofit um, organizations. Uh, they're conservative think tanks is what they are. And what I issue here is there was a California rule that was enforced by the attorney general that required all nonprofits and charities to disclose their major donor list um, to the attorney general. Uh, the reason behind this disclosure law was that so California could police any type of consumer fraud uh, within um, charities, any type of theft uh, of monies or anything like that. Um, what happened in this case, uh, Americans for Prosperity, the organization, they either filed a redacted list of their disclosure um, donors or they didn't file them at all. And pursuant to an enforcement action, they filed the lawsuit along with the Thomas Moore Law Center challenging this rule um, alleging a violation of their First Amendment uh, right to freedom association. And basically what they are saying is, look, this, this law uh, improperly violates our right to freedom association such that our donors will not continue to donate to our charities uh, because of the fear of having their names uh, disclosed to the public. The state of California argued back that well, that could be true that um, if a mistake happens, their their names or uh, information could be disclosed to the public. But for all intents and purposes, the disclosure lists are, are being used in-house and to prevent fraud or whatever. Uh, the district court in California agreed with the, the two challengers, Americans for Prosperity and the Thomas More Law Center, and basically said, yeah, hey, look, this, this rule is, is overbroad. Uh, you know, you can't require all of their donors uh, or you can't disclose lists that, that has all of their do major donors' names and information on it. Uh, it's just too overbroad. Uh, you got to find a better way to do it. Well, the Ninth Circuit uh, Court of Appeals reversed the, the trial court and said, hey, look, well, you guys are already providing these lists to the IRS. Uh, to maintain your tax exempt status. There's nothing wrong with providing the same list to the California Attorney General so that they can um, enforce their anti-fraud, anti-theft um, laws and to make sure consumers are protected. So they reversed. And then they appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court and a divided court found for the petitioners, Americans for, for Prosperity and Thomas Law, the Thomas More Law Center, uh, when I say divided court, it pretty much fell on ideological lines. Uh, the decision was six to three with Justice uh, Roberts uh, writing the decision. And basically he said, well, look, you know, whether or not this is a, a, a First Amendment right or free association, the disclosure law is overbroad and must be narrowly tailored um, to effectuate their, their intent to protect consumers. And because you're, you're, you're requiring all major donors or you're requiring the charities to disclose all major donors that is overbroad and it didn't survive the the test uh, that they reviewed the facts under. They, Justice Roberts used a what they call a, a quasi exacting scrutiny, strict scrutiny type of test. Basically, he said, well, this is an important government interest. Um, and although you don't have to use the least restrictive means to, to effectuate this government interest of preventing fraud, you do have to narrowly tailor um, your, your remedy, meaning you can't require these charities to disclose all of their major donors, only the ones who may be having a problem, you know, or maybe for whatever reason, uh, their name gets out or what have you. I believe Justice uh, Thomas Alito, Gorsuch, and Barrett all agreed uh, with different uh, reasons. Basically, they couldn't agree on the right standard, uh, review standard to apply in this case, but nonetheless agreed it was overbroad and the, and the remedy 
to disclose was not narrowly tailored to effectuate California's interest in protecting for its consumers. Uh, Justice Sotomayor wrote a dissent and basically said, well, look, you know, I probably could agree with this if you have donors who may be getting harassed because their information got out about, you know, what charities they were donating to, what have you. But then you should provide relief to those specific petitioners or those uh, specific charities. You, you should not just invalidate a whole disclosure rule. And that was the basis of our dissent for the most part. Uh, this case is interesting. It may seem like a case that's not that important, but in actuality it is because it could affect, you know, it could have some long-term effects that um, that affect uh, disclosure laws altogether. Now there's a new standard, even under the infamous case of Citizens versus United, uh, Citizens United, excuse me, versus the FEC back in 2010. And that was a case that basically said uh, that, you know, the government, you can't cap the amount of private money spent on elections. But what's important in that case was that they upheld the disclosure requirements. And even Justice Scalia agreed with that. You got to have, you know, disclosure requirements if you're going to make substantial um, contributions to these campaigns. As long as they're reasonable and they're important to, a government, to some type of uh, government interest. Uh, what this does, this case, Americans for Prosperity, what it could do, it could invalidate all future disclosure requirements. So what you're going to have is um, organizations, nonprofits, charities, or whatever, taking all kinds of money, uh, not having a requirement to disclose, and it could really, really get out of hand. Again, Citizens United, not only do you have unlimited private money going, going into politics or political campaigns, now uh, there aren't going to be any disclosure requirements uh, for that money going in. Also, this could affect um, disclosure requirements for uh, financial institutions, uh, financial consumers, customers. Um, it could have some bad effects on all types of money laundering and, and that type of thing. So it'd be interesting to see if the Supreme Court tries to reel this ruling in, uh, if another case gets before it with these same issues. But nonetheless, I wanted to kind of jump on here really quick to profile this case. I think it's a very important case um, you know, I'm, I'm not surprised the decision came down the way it did, six to three. We're pretty much the right wing on the court, citing for Americans for Prosperity. Um, the petitioners were pretty much uh, conservative think tank or advocacy groups for the most part. So that part's not um, too surprising. But I think when you look back to Citizens United versus the FEC, uh, Justice Scalia, who was considered one of the most conservative justices in, our, in modern time, and I know he's since passed, but he even said that he thought that, you know, disclosure requirements are a good thing because if you're going to make it take a stand politically, you should be able to do that in public and and argue for whatever stand you're taking. In any event, let me know what you think. Uh, leave a message in the comments and we'll see you next time.